Hey yo, everything that happens is part of a plan But you gotta wanna change, take life in your hands and make moves Two lines through the S's, passing on life Get the message What up world, my name is Jamie Ab Murphy Hagee And I'm Shane McIntyre And this is the message today We got the homie Jules Muck Jules Jules Muck doing doing big things for the culture. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, Jules, can you tell us where where are you from? That's a tough one. Yeah. Dude. I was, well, I was born I was born in the UK actually, which is weird because I don't know much about the UK. But I came over to New York when I was like a baby, and then back mm-hmm. and forth my whole childhood. So I would say, you know, I mostly grew up in New York. So, what part and why? When I was younger, I was Queens. Yeah. Then we were in Westchester. When I was a little older, I was in the Lower East Side. Okay. Nice. So I bounced around a little. Yeah. And then I was also going back to England a lot, and my dad is from Greece. So okay. I spent a good deal of my childhood over there. Okay. Which is actually the first place I really started writing graffiti. Yeah. Strangely enough, is on this little island called Lesbos. And uh, that book Subway Art had cut, got there, yeah. you know, and we yeah. cracked that book and, yep. you know, I always say everyone was either skateboarding or uh, writing graffiti and, and I was really clumsy, yeah. so I couldn't skate. <laughs> How old <laughs> yeah, were you like, at the time? I was like writing. 13, 14, 13, 14, you know. Years old. No, you were in the UK, right? That was in Greece. That, that was, was in Greece. Greece. That was in Greece. Yeah, and I picked up a can once and I went behind, it was a potato storage or something. Right, this yeah. building. Right. And I did my first thing with a spray can. And right. I had been writing on stuff, you know, I had paint pens and I had been doing curse words on all the street signs and right. whatever the fuck. And, um, but then I had the can in my hand and I'll be honest with you, like as much as everybody starts out a toy, I was surprised yeah. at how easy it was. I was like, yeah, oh, can control. this shit is cool. It wasn't dope, but it was for me at the time, I was like, oh shit, like I right. can do this. Right, right, you right. know, it's like, cause it, it looks so intimidating. And when I did it, I felt it. I connected to it. The first thing I ever wrote was the word unity. Nice. And I nice. wrote that and I painted the world exploding. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Nice. That's great. That's dope. That so my so the can control came naturally almost for you? In the beginning, you know, it was enough for me. Of course, it's always progressing. From right. For this year, looking back at last year, I have like 10 times more can control. Were they? Were you fucking with like different caps back then? Was it fats and thins like the Dude, old school shit? We didn't have much. We had like farm equipment paint. It was on this little island. I don't think we had caps. So I no mean, Krylon or Rusto? There wasn't even Krylon or Rusto. That <laughs> shit hadn't even got there yet. Wow. It was really budget. I don't even remember the name of the paint, but it was. You know, you were lucky if it came out in a straight line. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what was what was life like for you like prior to getting clean? It was just so stressful. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I would get loaded to um, to feel good, but most of the time I was running around trying to get to that good feeling. So I was just stressed the fuck out and anxious. That's what I remember a lot. Like just being like, it's a stressful life. I got to make sure I have this thing. I have to go there. I got to make this happen. I have to get this, this, that, and this, and I have to get to this (laughs) spot so that this can happen so that I can feel good. Right. Right. You know, full time job, full time, full time -time job, feeling like shit, trying to feel good. You want to talk about like working like a 40 hour week. Like that's like a hundred hour a week job. It's not stop. It's like, it feels like a hundred hours a day. Yeah. You just go, 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 go. And your brain is on, on, on. How do I do this? How do I get this? Where's this guy? Why isn't this person? What do I do? Yeah. When's he coming to deliver? This motherfucker is not here. I better call somebody else. I don't know. I don't know. You got the good (laughs) shit. (laughs) So take us back. Like where, where did kind of the using start a little bit? Like how did that, how did that evolve? So to speak. I mean, I'll be honest. I think I'm like a natural born alcoholic because the Using for me, as far back as I remember, I've been trying to like get out of like get fucking some other feeling. You know, I'll shovel yep. sugar in my face. When I was a little kid, my earliest memory is pushing a chair up to the counter, crawling yep. on the chair, crawling on the counter. Dawn, you know, it's blue light in the yep. kitchen. Pull the fucking sugar bowl down and shovel that shit in my face. Yeah. And that was my first. And then I found like, you know, cold medicines, anything I could get. 
I could I could fuck with alcohol really young. My parents were European and they didn't really notice what was going on with that. Yeah, right. And I drank a lot. And when I I would travel a lot because I was back and forth England, Greece, New mm -hmm. York, whatever. And I would always get the little bottles on the airplane. Yeah. And my thing was like, oh, I collect miniatures. You know, it was right. a thing back then. Nobody oh, you're had collecting them. Oh, yeah, collecting so many collecting. things. Right. I got dollhouse, <laughs> right. blah blah right. blah. Right. I drank them all. You know. <laughs> Naturally, of course. <laughs> and I used to love to just like take. I, it was like a comfort thing. I would get the liquor and Cool Whip and, you know, cigarettes when I was, like, way too young to be smoking. And I would sit on my roof in New York. And I would just surround myself by these things. And it was like, I'm trying to fucking take care of myself. Yeah. Because yeah. life was crazy. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I didn't know right. where we were living. I didn't yeah. know where I was supposed to do. I was always the new kid. I always yeah. had the wrong accent with the wrong clothes, the wrong <laughs> place. Yeah. And I was like, let me fucking take care of myself right now. And yeah. that's how I knew how to do that. It felt good. The cool, it felt good. The cigarettes were good. You know, and it was all stuff that I kind of thought, you know, they had said don't do it. But why they say don't do it and then it's still there, you know, it makes course. you think. Of course. Let me figure this out. Yeah. There's got to be a reason. Plus, yo, I know, like, for me, when I was younger, it was like, when I was writing graph. Getting fucked up and writing graphics, <laughs> especially as a teenager. Yeah. I was like, this goes hand in hand. Right. Yeah. Let's right. fuck the city up. Right. Dude, for Gasoline sure. Gasoline and fire. And I used to love to fucking paint shit about, like, when I was on acid, like, I loved to look at shit. Yeah. So I would draw words and letters and shit just to look at when I was tripping. Yeah. And I, it inspired me. It was like, you know, like, oh, this looks so dope. Like, what right. if I do this, you yeah. know? And I got into it, and I was like, it was like my way to give back to everybody. I'm going to make this cool shit for us to look at while we're fucked up. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of went hand in hand. And it felt like the only way to get free, and, and part of getting free was creating, and part of it was fucking getting wasted. And not being, you know, sidelined into the system that you were told, like, you're going to have to go to school, you're going to have to go to college, you're going to have to get a job, you're going to have to get fucking married, you're going to have to have kids, you're going to have to go to work every right. fucking day, come right. home, have dinner, watch TV, and go to bed. Right, right. You know, and I was like, how do I get out of that? Right. I'm going to fucking right. chew heroin. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. That might work. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. So... Yeah, man. Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how it goes. Cause it's like you you see people that are like, damn, people really are living like that. Mm, yeah. Like, I don't want no part of that shit. The yeah. routine schedule of you know. Yeah, man, and I don't even think I I can function like that. I don't I don't think it's possible. Can you um, can you take us to like, what was it that made you want to get clean? Well, you know, it got it did get really bad for me. I did. I do go really hard with everything I do. I go really hard. Of course. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I, I was trying to get clean from the as soon as I fucked up with heroin, and I started doing heroin because I couldn't stop drinking. I was getting alcohol poisoning right. yeah. all the time. This girl gave me heroin and be like, "Look, right. you have the cops coming up here all the time. We're trying to sell shit, right. and you have the fucking ambulance here because <laughs> yeah. you can't stop puking. Like, you need to stop drinking." Right. And they so gave me heroin, heroin yeah. to yeah. cure right. my alcoholism, right. right. and the right. shit worked. Right, right. of course. And I did heroin every day, yeah. and I didn't even know that it was like an addictive thing. You know, right. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I knew it was addictive, but I didn't know about record from Dream. I didn't know about Train Spy. I didn't know about any of this shit where yeah. you're gonna kick and all that. I was just like, this shit is fucking great. Didn't, didn't read the rules of engagement. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look ahead. <laughs> so you started like, as a hardcore yeah. alky, and there's kind of heroin was like the solution right it was my solution yeah. and i was fucking with everything else but yeah. i didn't really like uppers that much i would do yep. them because i would do whatever yeah of course but like yeah and uh you know what happened with the heroin is um i i finally did end up finding out what it was like to kick and it was a really bad experience obviously yeah and i also figured out that this whole that whole thing was you know i didn't want to fuck with it anymore so i tried in the beginning, I just locked myself in my parents' basement. I went home, gave up the life, stayed in the basement, and was just trying to figure out how the fuck am I going to not do that shit. I know I can't do that shit again. Yep. And, uh, and I didn't have the knowledge. I still didn't know, like, oh, it's all the same thing. I right. was like, okay, so beer is chill. Right. right. Pot is chill. <laughs> Ecstasy is probably chill. Yeah, yeah. I right. mean, it's a party drug. Yeah, uh, right. Ass is right. definitely all right because right. it's mind expanding. Right. I know that Coke is bad. 
Yeah. Like, heroin's bad. Meth is fucked up. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, so true. I'm like trying to like figure out navigate the system. Yeah. And uh, and it wasn't the right way to go about it because you know one thing led to another. Yeah. And I ended up back in the same position. I ended up strung out again. Yeah. And uh, and I went through so many times of being like, no more. I'm not gonna do this anymore. And I'd be like, let me get on methadone. Yeah. You know, let me get on weed. I'm just gonna smoke weed. I'm just oh, gonna awesome. drink forties. I'm just gonna do this. And uh, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And I heard little bits about different recovery programs, but to me, it seemed kind of like it seemed a little bit too much like that uh, that uh, fucking white picket fence life, you right, know. Right, and I was right. like, well, that's what those people have right. to do. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, yeah. I'm living on the outskirts, so I have to find the way that works for the person who's here. Right. Yeah, you, you thought know? you were different. I thought I was different. I was right. like, I'm going to go to Sweden and right. go through Ibogaine treatment. Right. right. You know, and I went over <laughs> right. to Sweden. I knew Blue. She was a writer. And I went yeah. over there, but the fucking Ibogaine farm was closed because it was winter. Yeah, so I just sure. had to do speed, you yeah. know. <laughs> and uh, the detox from the heroin. Right? God right. knows yeah. I brought the heroin with me. Of course. And I didn't even detox. Of course. Right. Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. So I did all these weird things like, I'm going <laughs> to videotape myself kicking. Right. So oh, then I won't ever do it again. Do you have that footage? I have it to like <laughs> told the guy to get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> but it was supposed to be my last day, you right. know, and I throw the needle out the window right. and it's all epic and you know. Right. It's kind of like from the movie Train Spotting, right? Did you ever see the movie? Chain oh, Spot, yeah, yeah. Right? He's like, I'm going to kick heroin today. So he like pounds himself. He locks himself in the yeah. room. He boards up the room. He brings all the alcohol in there. And then like five minutes later, he tears down the fucking boards. And yeah. goes and well, dude, shot. you see it in my <laughs> yeah. whole video yeah. because I'm like, I'm going to do the last of this. And then yep. I'm going to save some for later, two yep. minutes later. Yep. I'm going to do, let me just do it all. And yep. then like a little while later, I'm like, what time did I tell that guy to meet me? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and that's yep. the end of the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, fuck, you fucking insanity. crazy person. Yep. Yep. And you just, you know, your mind is telling you one thing and it's a, it just tricks you so yeah. much. Yeah. But um, I didn't really, I didn't really have a shot in hell till I asked someone else to help me. Yeah. Because I thought the whole time, like, I got to overcome this. Like, I'm fucking strong. My parents told me, like, you know, you have to survive. Nobody yep. in the world is going to have your back. Yeah. It comes down to it, it's all you. Yeah. And so I never thought, Oh, let me tell someone I'm too weak to manage my own fucking body and my own consumption of a narcotic. Like, and, and, that, keeps, and that keeps a lot of people sick. Like, I know for me, yeah. I, I didn't want to ask for help. Like, I thought, you know what? I can kick the pills. I can kick the dope. I can, I can kick it on my own. Yeah. Show yeah. no weakness. You know, show no weakness. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, a lot, it kills a lot of people. That's yeah, the worst it thing. Kills yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, that's that was the hardest. And I would have got clean a long time ago if I'd just been like, hey. By the way, I, I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. Right. Yeah. But um, it took what it took, and when I finally asked for help, you know, I got help, and I and I was so for me it was it was worse than bottoming out on heroin. The, the humiliation I felt having yeah. to be like, yeah, take me into your fucking rehab, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I'm gonna go sleep in a fucking bed with. I hadn't been, you know, under anyone's authority for years when I went to rehab when they're telling me. Go to this group. Right. Wake up this at this food. time. Yeah. Eat this. Get on the bus. That. Get off right. the bus. Get on the eat. van. Get off the van. Right. It was so yeah. gnarly, and I did end up getting kicked out actually for tagging all over this fucking nice. park. Nice. I, I was. I mean, we're gonna get kicked I out. I needed a high. Yeah. If we're gonna get kicked <laughs> out for anything. I mean, that's a pretty good that. reason. Yeah, it was what, crazy. I have one question. Was it good? <laughs> it was. Ter- it was all right. You know. I mean, I had one blue marker. I remember. Right. They took us out for our outing. It right. was. A, this is pretty chill. I, I hit up the whole federal park. You know everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Meanwhile, everyone called me Muck in the rehab. Yeah, right. That was my name. Yeah. Right. You know, and they're like, it says Muck all over the park. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. It know wasn't know me. About. Give us the a... marker. They were surrounding me. I was like, right. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have no marker. They're like, do you know what happens in Philadelphia if you go to jail? You get hosed down naked. Yeah. And I was like, no shit. They're like, we're going to call them right now. I was like, here's the marker. You know? And then they're like, all right. We're going to let the other patients in the facility decide your punishment because nobody from now on is going anywhere. We're going to lose all privileges, all outings, all outside meetings. So they voted you off the island. So, well, first what they did, the kids were so cool. They were like, you have to, they were so cool. That's what made me trust other alcoholics. They were like, you have to guess every day who has the ball. 
and the fucking authorities of the rehab were like, wait, what? You know, like, what? Uh, right. So I had to, like, you know, they played a game. They yeah. tricked everybody, and they were like, they took they took care of me, the other yeah. people in there. I did end up getting kicked out by the authority people anyway. Eventually? But, Eventually, um, yeah, 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 yeah. They were like, yeah. enough of this bullshit. Yeah. But what it showed <laughs> me was, like, oh, these fucking other addicts and alcoholics actually have my back. Yeah. You yeah. know, and yeah. we're all doing the same thing, and I can trust them. Yeah. And it wasn't just them, it was all the other people in recovery after that that's when i learned that we're in it together yep and so it was you know i got kicked out of rehab but i went to a sober living the sober living i started meeting the people that were trying to do the right thing i started going to meetings i started like going uh fellowshipping and meeting other people helping other people talking to people that had more time than me and i started reading on them was this right. in philly this was actually after philly the sober living I went to was in Connecticut. It was called Turning Point. Okay. And uh, it's now it's a huge sober living, but at the time it had just started. Right. And it was like a little fucking shitty house in a crack neighborhood across right. the street from a crack house. What part of uh, Connecticut? New Haven. Oh, yeah. Gun wave in New Haven. Yeah. yeah. I used to go to school in West Haven. Oh, right, huh? Yeah, way back in the Dude, 90s. that place had my back. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good recovery there because a lot of rehabs dump into there yeah yep. so there's a lot of um, young people's meetings yep a lot of sober livings my little brother is there right now oh mm. yeah he got sober too just recently so oh, congratulations to him yeah, how, old you, how old is he he's four years younger he's like 34 okay and cool. um he uh he has like six months now that's yeah, great it's so great. cool it's yeah, that's it was so cool because the people that helped me however many years ago 2005 i was there and then uh you know, they, they, there was people there, because I like, went crazy there. Like, I um, I did my sober living, then I stayed there, then I got a warehouse, then I had, like, everybody in the world fucking detoxing. Right. You yeah. know, and a lot of people that <laughs> detox there, they help my little brother. Yeah. And they're sober. That's and, great. Um, you know, I ended up leaving. I ended up coming out to California when I had, like, four years sober. And, and shit was crazy. You know, somewhere along the way, shit, I started getting on psych meds, I told you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and what happened to me, the reason I got on psych meds is, like, I was really depressed. Yeah. But the reason I was really depressed, my boyfriend would even die. Uh, you yeah, know, so you're like, sure. you gotta look at something and say, this is, you're allowed to be depressed. Right, yeah. right. Not throw meds at the situation. Yeah. But I got on meds. And what happened when I got to California is through like switching doctors somehow, I got on, uh, I got on some like speed. Yeah. I got yeah. on speed, I got on Xanax, I got on all this shit that I didn't really understand because I was never a pill head in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I was like, this is like, you know what? Yeah. You take care of your problem. You go, yeah. you get medicine. Yeah. This is you what I was a, taught. You take, so, right, you you take, take your pill. fucking thing. Yeah. You do the right thing. You yeah. follow the right. Right. Again, no rules of engagement. Really. Yeah. 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 Fucking right. read ahead. I talked to like the one guy in AA that was on Adderall, and I was like, oh, he's on it, so we're straight. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, the one uh, guy. The one guy. The one guy. He's the one that shares it every meeting. He's doing it. It's okay. Right. Right. He's sharing some Shakespearean shit every meeting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's what happened, man. It went crazy from there, and um, and I was out without knowing I was out. And like I said, like I um I almost burned my whole life down, and someone called me out, and I realized what was going on, and I kicked, but I didn't kick with the right situation. And you yeah. you know the th I was coming off of like mood stabilizers, Adderall, Xanax, and like antidepressants, and I went a little crazy. Yeah. To the point where like I had a smash pit in front of the house, I was breaking everything. Yep. I cut off all my hair to the bone, oh, you know? Yeah, I was trying to cut my skin off, I was freaking out, yep. and I smoked some weed. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I had put myself in a position where I had drugs around me all the time. Yeah, of course. Because when I was on Adderall, I wasn't scared to be around drugs. I was packaging weed here. I was selling acid. I was doing all that gnarly shit. I was yep. living like a junkie, basically. Yep. So when it was ready, I was, you know, was, I slid right in. Yep. And uh, and I was like, oh my god, this weed is amazing. Why didn't I ever just think this was <laughs> right. weed? Right. right. I right. feel fucking fine. Right. right. Of course. I'm not even an alcoholic. Right. I don't even feel shitty. Right. This is great. I don't even need one more than one hit. I'm like one hit. I'm fucking chilling. You're good. Yeah. I'm not yeah. even angry, not bitching, not crazy. Yeah. Everything's cool. Yep. So I did that every day. Then a fucking couple months later, I started drinking again. Yep. And I was oh. like, well, I'm going to have a drink. Yep. I didn't even like the drink. And yep. I used to pound bottles. I told you, I always drink till I got alcohol poisoning. I had half a margarita, and I was like, this, I mean, this, this, not, this isn't doing anything for me. Yeah. Right. yeah. I was like, yep. whatever. Yep. And, uh, and so I drank every day after that. 
Just a little. Like, I'd have, like, so controlling, you know. I'd be like, yeah. I'm going to have half a pint with dinner. Yeah. Or whatever. And, uh, and then uh, I got a big job in New York. And, um, you know, I was out there. I was like, I got vanilla duches. Everything is great. Uh, I was like, yeah, look at me. Yeah, Woo. Yeah. I'm back. I'm right, back. Yeah. Life yeah. is good. Yeah. Money. I'm working right. in the movie industry. I got yeah. this restaurant trying to pay me to paint. Killing the game. I got a pad in Brooklyn, Williamsburg. I got oh, a pad shit. in Venice Beach. I got an assistant. I got my dog. I got, everything's cool. Yep, right. And, uh, you know, I'm going to fix my teeth because Adderall right. did a number yep. on my teeth. Yep. So I start fixing my teeth and I'm like, mind giving me the pain meds. Yeah. yeah. And I hollered at my friend. I'm like, I'm trying to paint the ceiling of this restaurant all night long. My fucking got root canals, tooth killing me. I'm crying in pain. Hook me up. And he's like, you know what I have. I called my friend Horse. Yeah. I called my friend Horse to ask if he had pain meds. Right. Yeah. He had what he had. Yeah. And I just started doing heroin again. And it, I'm going to say, like, it was a gift of my higher power and probably all that work I did trying to get connected to spirituality but within three weeks of doing heroin i was on my back laid up couldn't move couldn't breathe Fuck. Yeah. on a respirator in a hospital wow <clears throat> and that was not because i did too much shit it was because my lungs just decided to fill up with fluid yeah and uh and it stopped me because otherwise nothing was about to stop you me kept right right I'm talking yeah. about i had money the yep. drug dealer decided he wanted to learn how to paint so I didn't even have to pay for this shit. He was just like, let me come watch. Right, you right. know, I was like, this is crazy. Right, right. And, uh, and everything was cherry, except for the fact that all of a sudden I couldn't walk or breathe. Right. And that was a godsend, Jesus, really, because I had to look at the situation and be like, well, I just can't keep going. God pumped the brakes for you. He was yeah. like, boom. Yeah, he was like, dude, you gotta <laughs> slow down. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you know what? I kicked. I, I kicked in a gnarly hotel room off I-95 called the Pelham Garden Motel. Ooh, that doesn't sound oh, pretty. Oh, it was yucky. Yeah. It was mirrored ceiling, neon. So okay. cold. And I'm just so staring at all these fucking yourself. assholes. So, so cold <laughs> turkey kick? Like yeah, just, yeah, dude. Oh, that's the worst. It was brutal. <laughs> Hug in the toilet bowl, right? I was right? like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> you did it again, yep. you motherfucker. Ah, yeah. Oh, man. That's so crazy. Yeah. But a little bit into the kick, I went out into the Bronx and I got some Carvel. And I was like, eating that Carvel. And I was like, oh, the fucking AA people. Right. They're in New Haven, those yep. people I know. Right. And I those hollered people. at them. Yeah, those, those people. Yeah. Those I was people. like, yep. fuck, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> some people, they're like, I had a head full of fucking programming and a beer full. I yeah, forgot yeah. that shit. Yeah, I was like, us. boom, out. Yeah. But um, when I remembered the people in recovery, and I was like, oh my God, they could help me. And uh, and um, I know we're not supposed to talk about this press media. I feel like this. I feel it's different. Well, you can say whatever. Yeah, yeah. We don't give a fuck on the message, dude. Yeah. Say whatever you want. All right, cool. So I hollered at these people. A lot of them who, would, like I said, had detoxed on my couch, and they were still sober. And, yeah. And I started driving, and I drove up to New Haven, and they took care of me, man. And you know, I was like. When I was like seven days into a kick, they were like, you got to go to rehab. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm going right. to meetings all day. I'm yep. this. And I remember the most important thing that I ever learned was to take suggestions. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, all right, you get me into rehab, I'll fucking go to rehab. And they yeah. got me in. And yeah. I went. I got kicked out again for some dumb shit. But I was there. You know why? Because I was there like, pills are bad. You shouldn't take that. Why are you giving them oh, that? Oh, I, I didn't <laughs> want, no, one was, no one was going to take psych meds. Either, right? <laughs> I'm like, you know what happened to me? So I right. had a big mouth. Right. They were like, you need to leave. And um, <laughs> You're like thinking your staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's running the, the place. Like, yeah. yeah, we're going to sue all these doctors. We're going to sue all these right. people. <laughs> four, four and a half days. Four and a half days clean and you're running the place. Yeah, Sign yeah. this petition. Yeah. 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 I got a lawyer. We're, we're going to kill you. We're suing. We see that a lot, too. Like, oh, yeah. We see that. Like, sure. yeah. Yeah, they get like, you know, six and a half days clean and all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm suing. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen, honey. For you sure. were smoking crack behind the dumpster six and a half days. <laughs> right. Right. Relax. Well, I know whose fault you know. this is. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yo, what, what is, like, I mean, so what? You So all this all this happened, and you got sober. Well, then I got right? sober. That was, the, that was my last hurrah. Right. I got okay. sober after that. I went back to New York. I gave up the job. I gave up. I walked off. Actually, my sister was giving me a hard time. I left her on the side of the road. Right. Yo, I just started driving. I drove home. This is what boggles my mind because I'm like looking around and you got like this dope crib that's like it's also your art studio. Yeah. Yep. So yo, how the fuck did you manage to keep this? That was a fucking miracle. 
You know, that's God. But like I was on my, this place was a fucking trap house too. It was. Uh, yeah, when I, I got imagine. home here, when I got home, there was drug dealers living here. Oh, my wow. friend had paid the rent, so I couldn't kick anybody out. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and right. I crawled in here with 30 days sober and I was like, can I sleep on the couch? This you're, is my house. Place, right. I'm like, can I sleep place. on the couch? Right. They paid the rent. Right. You know, I was out right. doing whatever I was right. doing. Yeah. Rehab. Right. So I fucking slept on the couch in my own house. Everybody's drugs everywhere. It's my oh first my 30 God. days sober. Bottles, empty, fucking weed. Someone sells heroin. I'm like, this is fucked up. Yeah. I go to a meeting. I go to another meeting. I call the homie. Can you yeah. pick me up? What are you doing? I'm driving yeah. delivery all night. Take me with you. I'm going to just sit in the fucking car. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I did. You know, wow. I did that and I saved money and I saved money. I could hardly work, but any penny I got, I saved. And when I had like, it was about three months sober, I was like, hey, everybody. Get the fuck out. I'm going to pay <laughs> all the rent. You all can stay as long as you want. Right. Nobody can smoke fucking any drugs in here, do any drugs, drink anything. Right. Everybody left. Hmm. That was it. It's funny how oh, they do that. Never, never yeah, bounced. yeah, yeah. So. And it's funny because my really good friend who did, it was the one that was paying the rent, three years later he got sober. And he came back here and he slept on the couch. It was so cool. (laughs) Full circle. It was full circle. He just got a year now. He just got a year. That was was the best thing. Yeah. Because he held the space for me and then when it was his time I held the space for him. That's how we do it though. So so kicked and then this time around. So like what is life looking like for you these days? It's just been like... You know, like a snowball, Mm -hmm. like my life has been getting, you know, it's a miracle, first of all, just to be alive. It's another miracle to live in this beautiful fucking place. I love Venice Beach and Venice has embraced me. And then, you know, there's the thing where I'm starting to realize I can just paint anywhere I want to paint. Yeah. And I gotten to give back. And to me, like, that's the best thing. Like I got to paint in Syrian refugee camps. I got to paint in juvenile detention centers. You know, I go and I paint everywhere. That's sick. And, um, That's amazing. And every <coughs> every time someone tells me like, "Oh, your painting like brought me together with my sister again. Your painting yeah. did this." You, yeah. I'm like, "That's all I'm here for." Right. You know. And I'm super grateful that people like give me money for it so that I can go eat at these bougie places yeah. around yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all I got. Of course. All I got is some good food. Of course. You know, I got nice food. <laughs> I'm there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's good. I mean, yeah. I have some hoopty trucks that I love, yeah, but no. I can go and, um, you know, I have my friends come over all the time. Most people in my life are sober. Yeah. I'm still working on myself so much. Like I have four years now. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's great. Congratulations. Thank That's you. fucking great. Yeah. For real. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, it's a struggle every day. And I, I got sponsees and I work with them and, and I, and I have a lot of like issues that I'm like, working on all the time right yes yeah. stuff that some people you know i was lucky for me my career came together first like i figured out how to make a living yeah mm-hmm. thank god and it's doing something i love i figured out how to be in i'm tied to god my inspiration comes naturally yeah a lot of my stuff thank fucking god yeah, that's my most important thing to me anyway the yeah. thing i have trouble with like a lot of stuff like socially with people i'm like ah uh, i get real sensitive i notice the longer i'm sober the more sensitive i am yeah like i'm yeah. like ah like yeah. i didn't used to give a fuck what you thought of me right. now all of a sudden i, I care now right. i care what other people think i hate that yeah. 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 yeah i got these fucking feelings yeah yeah like, <laughs> yep. i give a shit i yep. give a shit and then i give a shit and then tomorrow i give a shit right. still yep. about the same thing yeah yeah it's yep. like let it go let it go and i try and i work on it and i pray for people all the time and, um, and I've had like a lot of shit, you know, cause I come from graffiti culture. So like, you know, there's shit that goes down that you're like, you need to step up and do something. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Right. But yeah. I'm not supposed to be doing shit. Right. Yeah. So it's really crazy. I had some shit go down last year where I was like, oh, let me call somebody. Like, right. and then I was like, oh, fuck. You know, and my sponsor told me to do nothing. And meanwhile, yeah. my shit was getting dissed. And I didn't even do anything to deserve it. And there was also a guy talking shit about me. It was a yeah. guy who was mad. I didn't want to be with him. Yeah. Told a bunch yeah. of people I was a snitch after he sent me to jail. Like, I went to jail last year. Oh, that's yeah. You know, up. it was fucked up. Yeah. He and sobriety went to jail. This, I was yeah, yeah. in jail New Orleans. Yeah. In New Orleans. Yeah. In a holy cell. It was gnarly. <clears throat> so yeah. what? He was crossing you out or whatever? <laughs> yeah, he crossed me out. He told his homies to cross me out in different states, saying Damn. that I was a snitch. When yeah. he was the one that set me up. Wow. And so the whole time I'm like this, and he was a toy too, you know, right. so I could have crushed him and I could have had people do things that, you know, whatever. Every, I've been in the game for 25 years. Yeah. I yeah. know a lot of gnarly people. Yeah. I know I also had a bunch of money. 
Yeah. And when you have money, you win no matter what. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So you I was like, things. well, what am I going to do right now? Yeah. And let me do the right thing. Yeah. And my sponsor said, don't do anything. And oh, that was the hardest thing. So yeah. you gave him the ill pass. Ooh, yeah. I was like, yeah. you know what I did? I read this one verse. So crazy. Because I don't really fuck with the Bible that much. Yeah. But 1219 Romans, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Mm. Yeah. And I laid it down. Yeah. And I handed it over. Yes. And uh, that's great. And you know what it. happened from then? My success in the last year since then has quadrupled. The jobs have come slamming in. I've been on my game. My inspiration yeah. has been popping. I'm doing one thing after another, bigger, better, bigger, better. And I know that if I had taken that energy and putting it into destroying this little scumbag, yeah. it would have taken it away. Yeah, from what I needed to build. Of course. Yeah. And so instead, I got to build my tower higher to the point where he can't touch me. Yeah, because you want to channel the karma for the, for the positivity <laughs> right. energy. Yeah. That's right. You know? That's right. That's yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> speaking of the graffiti, can can we get into like, you know, because that's my shit. That's where I, I fell in love with hip hop through graffiti. Yeah. You know, my aunts, um, two of my aunts, one lived in a... One lived in Red Hook, Brooklyn, back in the day, in the <laughs> 80s. Yeah. And another one lived uptown um, in Manhattan. And, um, you know, my whole thing was I remember seeing, like, the subways fully painted. Um, my other aunt, she eventually moved from Red Hook over to the Lower East Side. And um, I remember, like, <clears throat> both. And so my family is, the one aunt I'm speaking about is a recovering heroin addict and alcoholic. So was my mother, you know, and so they used to run together, but they got these stories of like, when we would go visit LES, it was like, Jane, back in the day though, this was yeah, the gnarly. jump box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is where you got down at. And so like, <clears throat> Subway Up, uh, this was a book that might have changed my life and it did change my life, you know? Same. I don't, I didn't read much books then. I still don't read many books now, <laughs> but that book right there was my Bible. Yeah, you understand? I agree. And there was no internet back in the day, you know? Yeah. So, like, it was just like, if I wasn't taking road trips, I was reading this fucking book, dude. And I was just peeping out, like, all the all the artists. And, like, you know, I, I read somewhere that you, um, like, one of your mentors was Lady Pink. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, she found me on a rooftop. Really? Bronx. Yeah, she came up on the rooftop. I remember, because she started saying, you need to add some orange and yellow over there. And I was like the fuck and then it was her and i was like i froze right my, right. my man at the time gave her my number and yeah. then she started she started calling me to come paint and then i started working for her she's the first person who gave me money to paint wow yeah and you didn't know it was her at the time at first i didn't and i was like oh shit but i knew her because that was the first person i had that book subway art too in yeah. greece and i saw that right. picture of her and i was like oh chicks could do this yeah right. all right yeah so i knew who she fucking was and right. that was probably a time in my life when she came into my life i wasn't going to school i wasn't listening to anyone i was running around the bronx with btc just yeah. causing havoc wrecking murals right and that was the first and only person at that time that i was going to listen to so like God like, stepped in once again. Like this is the only person she might yep. get direction. So dope, so <laughs> dope. Um, who were some of the people that you met along the way? Oh my God, I got so I got so hooked up in graffiti, like because I'm, you know, I got taken in by Lady Pink, which meant her husband Smith took me to the tunnels. Yeah. I was in the tunnels with fucking Smith painting. We wow. were doing all sorts of crazy shit. We were doing freights. I was going to freights with Cycle. Fuzz Juan took me to the Seven Yard. Oh, you shit. know, old school shit. I'm talking yeah. about he was wearing like the full Adidas jumpsuit and the shell yeah. toes. Yeah. And yeah. we were going to paint under the Rockefeller Bridge. What was the Rockaway Bridge? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Rockaway Beach on that bridge, these, there's these pillars that are out in the water that when the tide goes out, you could walk you to can them. You pieces. Yeah. Yeah. We were painting all night. We turn around and the water had come in. No. Yeah. We had to get back through the water. Yeah. No. You know, That's but so that awesome. was the, you know, Zephyr, my first interview in 99 was by Zephyr. Yeah. First time Legend. I, that was fucking epic. And while you were sleeping magazine. Yeah. You know, and then I was. Great in, magazine. Fucking so I cool. used to cop it in Tower Records yes. in Boston yes. back in the day. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I was in that Great shit. Great magazine. 
That was cool. Yeah, that's super dope. And uh, you know, there was there was a lot of fun shit going on then. It was like the late '90s, early 2000s. Graffiti was hyped again. Yeah. You know, because it always like goes like that. Yeah, of course. And uh, and it was just meeting of styles all the time. People were coming in from all different countries. Everybody was crashing at everybody's pads. We were meeting all these people. Yeah. I was back and forth in the Bronx in England. I was traveling with this guy Shine, Shine Juan, Alex Martinez. He's a great fucking artist. And yeah. he's out. He's out in Europe now. But like we would, you know, we got down with BTC and we would be bombing, but we would also be doing our walls. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and I started hooking up like with the, you know, I did the first. Um, I was the first female to paint at the Wall of Fame in Harlem. Wow. One hundred six in Park. Yeah. yeah. It was really cool. And then you know I painted my little spot. They gave me a real little spot. And then the next year they were like, we want you to hook up a whole female wall. That's and I brought dope. in, you know, Fever came, QA came. It was a bunch of chicks. Two Fly was there, yeah. and we hooked up this wall. And, uh, and the coolest thing ever, they didn't have room for Case 2 on really? the other walls. And I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Come paint with the females. <laughs> yeah. Case 2 paint yeah, on that yeah, wall. Yeah, That's yeah. fucking that dope. That was dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. Um, what was like, speaking of the bombing, what is like one of your best bombing stories you got that you can remember maybe one that just comes to oh, mind oh man you know i always tell the funniest ones was like with speck and sense they were so crazy man and i remember one time like we finished the rooftop me and dace were down in the car and like that fucking it was morning we've been bombing all night right and the helicopters were coming like someone had spotted them from the train they were on a rooftop by the train by the four or five i forget yeah. But we were in the car, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, they're not going to be able to come down. The cops are waiting around the corner at the fucking fire escape. We're circling in the car. Right. And all of a sudden, like, three stories up, I see this boarded-up window pop off. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, they're not right. about to do this. Right. And these motherfuckers jump. No. Three stories. Oh. Boom. Oh, they get the car. Yeah, that was On great. the concrete? On the concrete. Get the fuck out of here. They fucking did Sad. it. They I broke love bones? Them. Yeah. Dude, they didn't break shit. Holy shit. I love those guys. They were wow. funny. Yeah, man. That's savage. That That's was fucking crazy. cool. Yeah, that, we had some good times. I used to run around on the highway. That was always fun. You know, when I got down with BTC, the way they didn't really, like, you know, jump me in or anything, but they were like, you got to put up BTC this many times, whatever. Yeah. And so one of the gnarly things I did was I hung upside down over the West Side Highway by uh, oh, Grand Tomb, and, and Godfuck held my ankles. And that motherfucker did not give a crap about human life. You know, right. he was the only guy in the Bronx that would tag on churches. Right. Right. And he wrote Godfuck. Right. You know? And, and he was holding my ankles and I'm upside down over the West Side Highway right. doing BTC. And I was like, this fucker would drop me and walk away in a heartbeat. Holy shit. Right. <laughs> right. I'm here, you motherfucker. Right. Yeah. So there was shit like that where I was like, damn, this is crazy. That's, That's fucking great. sick, That's great. dude. Yeah. Um. What about like for your art these days? Like, I mean, for me, like my art is my therapy, especially in sobriety. Like, what does that look like for you? I I recognize it now. I I recognize so much how therapeutic it is for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, shit, I was just down at this thing in South Central a couple weeks ago, and um, we were all in an alleyway, you know, just painting. It was a lot of older cats. You could tell these guys, they didn't do it for anything other than, like, just to feel. It was their fucking day off. They got families. They got jobs. Yeah, They're yeah. done with fucking graffiti as far as trying to make some name for themselves, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. They're just out there painting in this alley because yeah. it feels great. Yeah. It was the middle of nowhere, garbage alley, right. South Central. And uh, and it did. It felt really good. And that's it every day now. Like, because I, I told you I've been sick physically. I had a cold. Yeah. And uh, I still went out and painted because if I get into a rut where I'm depressed, yeah. I don't Stay know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I don't, I don't like that shit. So yeah. I figured it out. You go fucking paint. Yeah. Yep. And you feel better. Big thing. I, I hate the fact that we get arrested, you know, for painting on shit. Yeah. It's so fucked up. Like. I'm not even saying, like, I'm not trying to go around doing gang shit. I don't even really do letters that much anymore. Yeah, right. I'll go paint a picture. And and the thing that, last thing I got arrested for was I turned a train, stupid fucking train, into a hot dog. It looked a lot better. <laughs> Let me tell you, why can't it be a hot dog? What's your problem? You need a black thing? Why not a hot dog? Right, right. How is this going to hurt right, anybody? Right, right, right. Have a laugh. Relax. Right, right. Enjoy life. Right. <laughs> These motherfuckers That's threw awesome. me in jail. That's you awesome. Know? Are you, well, I see, like, 
I know you got you you have mad spots around here, mad walls that you've done around here, but like Never are you I mean is like are you just going up to these things and knocking it out or people have kind of accepted like who you are and like, yeah, we want this chick to rock it out. Yeah, I mean it's it's all different. A lot of times <clears throat> you know, people holler at me, people pay me, people ask me to. Yep. Sometimes I'll just paint something because I'm like, I think this is chill. Yeah. You yep. know? Yeah. And then sometimes the homies will be like, Will you paint that? And um you know, and there's times that it's more secure. You know, I work with people that are like giving me thousands of dollars to paint walls. At the same time, I'm like looking over my shoulder trying to paint something I don't know if I'm supposed to paint. Right, right, right. You right, know, and I right. get rolled on a lot and I have to talk my way out of shit. Yeah. So it's very, it's weird. People are like, do you paint legally or illegal? I'm like, I don't. I paint whatever I could possibly paint. If it's a homeless guy being like, oh yeah, it's chill. I'll be like, yeah. he told me. <laughs> that guy. Right, right, you know? right. He's the authority. <laughs> I don't know, I thought he yeah. owned the building. This is his house. <laughs> <laughs> this is his house. He's got a cardboard box in front of him. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Well, you know, right. he's got to look at it. What's right. the problem? Right. <laughs> What's the major like for you? What do you think is like some of your major accolades today, or major accomplishment accomplishments today that's been going on since you chose to get sober? I mean, my my greatest thing to this day was painting um, with the refugees. You know, in yeah. the camp, that was cool. Yeah. And that was um, they asked me. They were like, "Can you get media attention?" Like I was the first person on the scene in the Syrian refugee camp in Lesbos and uh, 7,000 refugees and no media attention. Yeah. And and I was like, I, I don't know the media. I like, right. I have social media. Right. You know, right. Like, I don't right. know. Right. I was like, right. I'll paint a mural, right. you know? Right. And like, you know, it took a while. People start catching on. And, and then, you know, I'm seeing months later, I'm seeing my mural in the refugee camp on CNN on fucking oh, National right. Geographic. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck yeah. And yeah. they didn't say my name and they yeah. didn't give me props, but right. it was, for me, it was all gold. That's right. so fucking gold. And dope, also though. with the, with the when I was in Miami and they asked me to paint in the juvenile detention center, that was moving a lot too, because you know, I'm associated with a lot of people that are in and out and right. kids are in and out and I feel like they need something and I'm in this fucking building and the, you know the warden and the guards are telling me like don't make eye contact don't talk to these these kids are gangsters yeah. these kids are murderers don't talk to them yeah. you know and I'm like by the end of the day they had the kids painting with me right. the guards yeah. are bringing everybody fucking Burger King yeah. it was like Shawshank Redemption right. you know yeah. they're like I haven't had soda in two years yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and we're all stoked and it was right. a fucking beautiful day that's awesome um, yeah man there's been some shit that has blown my mind and also some of the some of the companies that have supported me like I'm always like like shutters the most expensive hotel on the west coast yeah has me as their resident artist you know yeah, wow. they do their mugs they do their to go they do murals yep. Yep. and like why they chose me I don't know but I love working with them and right. it's yep. so weird you know yep. like they just had me do a map of my murals so that they could do tours Holy for the shit. people that stay at their hotels. That's amazing. And Travel and Leisure magazine came and looked into it and they did a wow. little interview with me. That's great. So all this cool stuff that happens just because and you know how I got hooked up with shutters? I was driving cross country, thirty days sober. Yeah. Trying to get home and mm -hmm. I picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah. yeah. And I was on fire with the program. Yeah. And I was like, We're going to meetings and he got sober. Yeah. And he moved to Venice and he went and worked at Shutters and he told them about me. And when oh, they were shit. looking for somebody they called. It's me. amazing how things kinda of come so That's crazy. karma. It's karma coming back. It's so crazy. crazy. Yeah. It really is. <clears throat> what do you have as far as some like good advice for like listeners and viewers that like even no matter what the age group is, um, about sobriety and trying to get into sobriety maybe if they're struggling with trying to get into sobriety i would say don't be afraid to ask for help mm -hmm. yeah. like you cannot do it alone yeah that's the one thing i know for sure yeah. yeah you might think you can do it alone i've kicked in the gnarliest situations i kick cold turkey and squats and trains and fucking planes yeah but <laughs> yeah i mean i do it to myself i like to hurt myself because i'm mad about what i've done yeah. But, like, the bottom line is it never fucking worked long term. It only works long term on a daily basis if I ask for help. And yeah, right. I mean every day. I ask God for help and I ask my fellow members of, you know, the program, whatever I'm affiliated with, the other people yeah. that struggle with my disease. Yeah. I ask them what they did about every little thing. Right. <clears throat> so. Yep. It's fucking dope, That's dude. Your great. story is so powerful. It's pretty amazing how like God just puts people in our lives these days. Yeah. yeah. 
Because um, <clears throat> I know my boy Gleason, like, I mean, these guys watched me, the whole, like, LMA, MSG crew, my boys in South Florida were, like, they watched me go through my struggles, you yeah. know, and to the point that no one was picking up my phone calls oh, no more. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> like, he's a yep. fucking mess. Yep. You know, and, um, <clears throat> and so they've also watched me go through sobriety, you know, um, to this current day, and so, like, you know, shout out to Gleason. Like, he was just like, Jay, like, I'm out in Cali. Um, you need to check this girl out. Her, her story's, like, no. real similar. And um, yeah. to me, I remember just, like, he sent me something and I was reading and I was just like, oh, wow, that's this chick is special. Like, she's she's doing a thing. <laughs> but then to be here, like, now and then to meet you is just pretty, it's special, man. Yeah. Like, God is just so good and so powerful. And obviously, like, what I can say is that obviously this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for me getting sober or you getting sober or yeah. Shane getting sober, you know, yeah. like, that's just how it works, man. Yeah. You know? It's good to be alive. Thank God. Right? Thank you guys for doing this. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So Thank you. Amazing, amazing, amazing story. And, yeah. and that's what we want to do. We just want to bring awareness <laughs> to the issue of, of alcoholism and addiction because there's so many people that struggle with it. Yep. So many people that, you know, they don't, they don't see a way out. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they do see a way out, like you said earlier, like you got to conform to a certain norm in society and you don't have to. Yeah. You know, you can be sober and you can do your thing and you can, you can live your culture, <laughs> you can live your life, but you can do it without drugs and alcohol. Yeah, and you know? better, better and than better. ever. And it's actually ever. the people I know that have been like, yep. let me just drink a little. They're the ones that ended up yep. going into that nine to five world yeah. you know, because yeah. they have to maintain their habit, yep. right. you know, and they're yep. trying so hard to keep being able trying to drink. to have that balance. Yeah, you know? and it's like, yep. what happened to you? Yep. You can't go anywhere or do anything because yep. you have your little fucking, yep. you yeah. know. Yeah. Dude, and then I think, like, even for, like, the, the younger kids, like, the millennials today, it's like, yo, you can be a certified G in the culture without getting fucked up. Yeah. yeah. And it's worse you know? now. It's worse these days. You're yeah. way more G yeah. if you don't get fucked up. Yeah. Look who runs shit. Like, it's yeah. not people who are off the rock. Or yeah, no, that's a not. fucking fact. It's not. Those people die or they fucking fall off even worse than that. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a facade, so, you know, I think, like, that's really where I'm trying to cater a lot of this to these days. It's like this younger synthetic generation and like that's what it is synthetic yeah. drugs and mm. synthetic facades and all this bullshit it's like yeah. like check this out if you can just clear your mind for maybe a 30 day span of time you can really start seeing the light of like what your mission can become yeah. you know um, you know so uh, you know I think it's it takes people like us to really like bring the message to the table so Jules people that are looking for like your <coughs> artwork looking for you how do they find you Mm-hmm. Oh, well, um, they could totally just go to, my website is julesmuck.com. Julesmuck.com. Mm-hmm. Or on the gram, I'm Muck Rock. Muck Rock. Muck Rock. And you can also just come by my house. No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 but everybody does. You yeah. know, I'm like, wow, well, who are you? <laughs> I'm pretty accessible. I come around your neighborhood, too. Awesome. <laughs> Jules cool. Muck, julesmuck.com. Jules Muck, y'all. All right. All right. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Awesome. awesome. That was super dope.